there's no need to fear. Underdog is here. Time again for the Underdog Show, starring that champion of champions, Underdog. battle of all time, Fero the Ferocious versus Underdog. But Underdog, weary already from other battles, seemed no match for the world's mightiest beast. Oh, goodness, that monster is just playing with poor Underdog. Yeah, Fero is bending up Underdog like a toy. vitamin pill. And as Sweet Polly Purebred looked closely at the ring, Underdog pushed the hidden button which opened the ring's secret compartment. The Underdog Energy Vitamin Pill. Here, Underdog, take it quickly. Gulp. My energy now is restored, you see. And Firo the Ferocious is no match for me. <laughs> Hurry, underdog! down car, so come out, come out, wherever you are. With Firo the Ferocious unconscious, the anchor chain from the ship was used to bind him securely. Then Underdog carried him aboard for the trip home. And soon everyone was watching the premiere of the new TV series, Beauty and the Beast. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you now the new wonder of the world. Hero, the Don't worry, ladies. Firo is tightly chained. And now watch as our own beauty, sweet Polly Purebred, feeds the mighty monster. Sweet Polly. Hero the Ferocious. 
Lucius was free, a monster loose in the city, and he held sweet Polly in his clutches. Where was Underdog, and how could he possibly stop Pyrrho without endangering sweet Polly? There is nerve-wracking excitement ahead in our next chilling episode. and nothing can go wrong now. But later, high over Lost Valley, something did go wrong. The plane made a sharp turn and... You jake! You turned so sharp, the money box fell out. And it's going down into Lost Valley. Lost Valley? But nobody can get into Lost Valley. The mountains are too high around it. That money is gone for sure. Oh, no. I'm getting that money back. I'll put an ad in the paper and get parachute jumpers who'll skydive into Lost Valley. Skydive? Who'd be naughty enough to make that kind of dive? Watch this dive, Chumley. A perfect swamp. Uh, hey, can you see? Why don't you watch this dive? Tricky, Chumley. A very tricky dive. We're so good, it's too bad we can't find a job as divers. Hold it. Hold everything. Uh, what's the matter, can you see? Just listen to this ad. Divers want it. Big pay, short hours, apply Rocky Maninoff. Hood Apartments. The perfect job for us, Chumley. Let's get dressed and sneak out of here. I don't see how that ad is going to help us. Nobody would be wacky enough to skydive into Lost Valley. Somebody always answers a one ad, Pretzel. And we'll hire the first nut who knocks on that door. We're here to answer your ad for divers. You're hired. Sign a contract. But don't you want to see us dive? Just sign, Bobo. We'll watch you dive later. See how easy it is, Chumley? Now we're professional divers. That's right. And you make your first dive at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Meet me and Pretzel at the airport. Airport? I didn't know they had a swimming pool at the airport. What's with the swimming pool bit? You're going to be skydiving at the Lost Valley. Uh, uh, skydiving? Uh, but skydivers dive out of planes with uh, parachutes. You said it, Bobo. And if you don't get to the airport at 3 o'clock sharp, I'll play a little tune on my violin. Ah, uh, sure. Uh, sure, we'll be there, Mr. Malinoff. Uh, but gee, Tennessee, we don't know anything about skydiving. All right, we'll find out. We'll go see Mr. Wolfie. So, you want to know something about parachuting, eh? Well, we wouldn't want to fall down on a job, now would we? Get it? Fall? <laughs> yes. First, let's make a small model of a parachute. Great, Mr. Whoopi. What do we use? Well, we take an ordinary handkerchief and four pieces of string all the same length. We tie one end of each piece of string to one of the four corners of the handkerchief. Like this. Uh, gee, Mr. Whoopi, that looks easy. It is, my boy. Next, we tie the four other ends of string to this toy soldier, or any kind of way to act as the man. And now, we're ready. We fold the parachute carefully and toss it into the air, and whoopee! It floats gently to the ground. Look at that, Chumley. Nothing to it. Of course, a real parachute is much bigger than our model usually about 24 feet across. It spreads out so far that it can't push the air out of the way easily. And that resistance is what makes the parachute float down slowly. It sure is big, all right, Mr. Whoopi. Yes, indeed. That's why a jumper can have a parachute spread out over him in a plane. The parachute must be folded up, but arranged so that it can open easily. Then it's put into a pack attached to a harness the jumper wears. When the jumper makes his leap, he lets himself fall until he's clear of the plane. And then he pulls a little cord attached to the parachute, and whoopee, it opens up. 
Thanks a million, Mr. Whoopi. We're making our jump this afternoon. What? Oh, no, Tennessee. I thought you only wanted some information about parachuting. You can't jump, except for real emergencies. Parachuting should only be done by those who've had very thorough training. I'm afraid it's much, much too dangerous for you and Chumley. You see, Tennessee, too dangerous for us. Zowie, I didn't realize it was so dangerous. I guess we'll have to change our plans. Uh, but thanks anyway, Mr. Whoopi. So long, boys. Hurry, Chumley. We'd better rush back to the zoo and hide out or that thug, Rocky Mananoff, will find us. You speaking about me, Bobo? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, sorry, Mr. Mananoff, but we just discovered we have a previous appointment for this afternoon. Uh, we won't be able to do that skydiving for you. Oh, that's too bad. Because I get very upset when you break appointments. Ah, uh, wait, wait. I think we can uh, cancel that other appointment. And so our heroes were soon at the airport, climbing aboard Rocky Mananoff's small plane. Okay, Pretzel, Lost Valley is right below. Start circling the spot. Now, you guys remember all the instructions I gave you. And don't forget my box. Okay, which one of you is first? Uh, you go ahead, Chumley. After you. Uh, no, that's okay, Tennessee. After you. Uh, after you. Uh, after you. Uh, after you. All uh, right, uh, knock it off. I'll settle this. Yeah! It opened. Tennessee Tuxedo will not fail. And now you, Boo Boo. Uh, gee, Mr. Maninoff, if you'd like to go in my place, I don't mind. I pulled the cord, I pulled the, 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 with my cord, with my cord. Yeah! Oh, gee, the ground wasn't so hard after all. Get off, Chumley, get off my parachute. Uh, okay, Tennessee, I'll come down with you. No, no, get off, get off. We're going down too fast, we'll crash. Yeah! Jim Winnett Walrus. Uh, but look over there, Tennessee. It's the box Mr. Maninoff told us to get. Well, that's good. But where's the big basket we're supposed to be picked up in? Mr. Maninoff said we'd get it right away. Uh, dear Tennessee, you got it. And moments later, our heroes with Rocky Maninoff's box were inside the basket, waiting to be picked up. Mr. Mananoff, but we've had enough. We'll just stay here. But we can't land like this. Climb up here. No thanks. Then I'm coming down. Now give me that box. Look out, you're rocking the basket. Well, it looks like Rocky Mananoff made a perfect getaway with all that bank money. I guess we'll never find it now. Don't say that, Sarge. I bet you we'll get a break in this case yet. Oh, sure, sure. Maybe Rocky Maninoff and all the money will just come falling out of the sky right into our laps. Well, Chumley, how does it feel to be heroes? Our skydiving certainly broke up that bank robbery. Uh, yeah, Tennessee. Our skydiving just about broke up everything. <laughs> <laughs> Meter, Hex. Did I ever tell you about the most famous football game by Hex? I believe so, Commander, and... We were playing the top team in the nation. Outweighed us three to one, and their line was a solid wall of steel. In spite of the great odds against us, we managed, through my superior brain, don't you know, to hold the blighters to a single field goal for three points. Their solid steel line took a tremendous toll on our men. Finally, I was...
was left alone in the game, and the Blighters were leading three to zero. End of the last quarter, I and I alone had the ball. What in the world did you do? Hiking the ball to myself, I quickly tossed a high forward pass. While all eyes of the opposing team followed the ball into the air, I sneaked swiftly through the line and caught the ball in the end zone. We won the game six to three. It sounds, Commander, as though you really had a ball. Right. Sweet Polly Purebred was in the clutches of Hero the Ferocious, the world's mightiest monster. Help! Underdog! Where, oh where, has my underdog gone? Oh where, oh where has he gone? Hey, uh, you! Uh, give me a shine and make it a good one. Yes, sir, Mr. Riff Raff. Gone. I'm sorry, Mr. Raff. I must run along. Hey, listen. Hey, you ain't to finish my shine, or you'll be shining up the sidewalk with your hands. Oh, woe is me. I dare not thrash these hoodlums for fear of exposing my true identity as underdog. But sweet Polly needs me. Indeed she did. But so did the entire city. The entire city police force was on the job. We can't shoot cheap or we might hit Sweet Polly. You're right. In this case looks too big for us. Better have all cars search for underdog. There you are, sir. Your shine is all finished. Hey, you mooch! How does this shine look? Terrible, boss. Terrible. <laughs> now start over, shoe shine. And this time, do it right. I must think of a plan to get away without exposing my true identity. Meanwhile, Hero the Ferocious stalked through the city, stepping on houses, knocking over tall buildings, picking up trains as if they were toys. And now, military forces had joined the police. Glad to have you, General. We still haven't been able to locate Underdog. Well, we can't wait. Too many lives at stake. We'll have to open fire. But, General, we might hit Sweet Polly. We'll have to take that chance. It's her life against thousands. Bring up the tanks and cannons! Oh, poor, poor Sweet Polly. If only Underdog were here. Oh, excuse me, sir. I must answer the phone. Phone? I didn't hear any phone. Uh, might be for you, boss. Uh, okay, Shushine, but don't try to limb out. And quickly, Shushine stepped into the nearby phone booth and became... Underdog. Well, well, what happened? Where's Shushine? All right, men. When I give the command, open fire. Oh, poor, poor sweet honey. Ready, aim, fire! I am a hero, so your firing is folly. I'll stop Firo and save Sweet Polly. But at any moment, Firo might crush Sweet Polly or drop her to the ground. What could Underdog do? Here you are, Firo. Bananas to eat. I'm sure you'll find them a tasty treat. And as the clever underdog tossed the bananas, Hero dropped Sweet Polly, so his hands would be free to catch the bananas. And underdog stepped into position and caught Sweet Polly. Oh, thank you, underdog. But now, what will you do with Hero? I shall take him back to his own island spot. All creatures belong in their own habitat. And so the world's mightiest beast would be returned to his uncharted island, and the world would be safe from Hero the Ferocious.
but what new test of strength will underdog meet? Don't miss our next exciting episode.